Hello friends, Robert here from Diverse Opals. I guess you've been uh, looking at some of our videos, if not, and you're here for the first time, welcome. I'd like to encourage you to subscribe to our, our uh, YouTube channel uh, because over the following weeks and months, we're going to be providing a lot of information. This is a, a lifetime of things that I've gathered from experience and I'd like to share them with you now. So if you like our program, give us a like uh, and subscribe. Here on the table before me and before you are a number of different grinding wheels. And I want to talk about them today because when it comes to grinding opal, you need to understand what is suitable for your application or what you can actually afford. So um, stay with us and I hope that what I'm going to tell you will be of help to you. Now the first wheel I'd like to talk to you about is a silicon carbide grinding wheel. Uh, maybe you can't afford to uh, buy a diamond wheel, but uh, silicon carbide is fine. Uh, silicon carbide wheels were the benchmark, uh, I guess, for a very, very long time until diamond products became readily available. And if you look at this one here, uh, this is just a typical silicon carbide wheel. It's actually branded as a lapidary wheel. Um, and you can buy sometimes these types of items in your local hardware. There are wheels that you should and shouldn't buy. So if you're setting up your own machine uh, and uh, you're, you're making everything from scratch, uh, you will need to buy yourself a wheel. So if you can find one in your local hardware or your metal shop, that's fine, but it has to be silicon carbide. You cannot use aluminium oxide. If, your wheel, if the wheel that you're looking at and you think is suitable is pink or white, it's more than likely aluminium oxide. Silicon carbide has the gray color about it, and um, that is what you need for grinding opal. Aluminium oxide is no good. Now, the only downside to silicon carbide wheels is the need to dress them. And you'll be able to see in the, in the image that this has a groove in it. Now, there's nothing wrong with the groove at all because, in fact, in some cases, this helps you put the dome on the stone. And of course, these items have to be used with water. So what I'm going to show you now are just some items that you will need because the wheel not only grooves, and as I said, there's not a problem with the grooving, it's the wheel going out of round. Just through wear, these wheels will go out of round and you will need to dress them from time to time to stop them from hammering and chipping up against your opal. And so there are things you can get like this. This is a T-bar diamond dresser. Um, electroplated, it's an electroplated diamond surface on here. And uh, when applied in the right manner across the face, you'll actually grind away the edges. If it's, if, if it's dished and you want a flat wheel again, this will help to, sh to straighten this up, but also bring it back into round. So that's one type of diamond dresser. Uh, this one here, uh, I can't say that I'm I've ever used one of these, but this is a, um, uh, a metal slug, um, a sintered metal slug. Uh, diamond particles are in here, and you use it in the same manner of dressing across the face of the wheel. And normally you would put a piece of timber across, across the front of your machine, across the tray, to rest this, because holding this by hand is not going to work. You will need to brace it onto something. And I guess in, in, in a future video, I might touch upon on how to dress a silicon carbide wheel with a diamond dresser. And lastly, the one that I've used, I used in the beginning when I was starting out in this industry, uh, is a single point diamond dresser. And this is about a, a half carat single point diamond crystal. And, and it works in the same manner. But uh, because it's a single point, if it's not braced on a, on a piece of wood and held down, when you're grinding across the face of the wheel, uh, it'll start to bounce, and you can, in fact, knock the diamond crystal out of the actual tip. But uh, you want to brace it, and you want to work backwards and forwards with plenty of water to bring everything uh, into true again. So that is silicon carbide. Nothing wrong with silicon carbide. People still use silicon carbide. But because of the availability, of diamond now, a lot of people are swinging over to diamond because it's actually cleaner. The next diamond wheel I'd like to show you is an electroplated diamond grinding wheel. 
Um, I think for many of you, if you've ever been involved with diamond grinding wheels, this is a wheel that you'd probably be using or that you are familiar with. Uh, these wheels are actually a metal ring, plastic center, and the diamond particles are deposited on the surface and it's just a single layer. Um, these wheels are quite a right for, for doing your regular lapidary work, even glass work. Um, you'll use them and then they will just progressively get finer, they will cut less, and they'll reach a point of where they're no longer usable. But these still are quite a good wheel if you can't afford to buy anything that's perhaps more expensive because there are more expensive wheels. So this is an electroplated wheel. Um, I don't know there's much else I can really tell you about it, but um, yeah, for value for money, they're quite good. Uh, there's no, no real maintenance of this type of wheel. Uh, just um, try not to leave water running onto it because they can corrode. They sometimes can corrode through the plating, depends on who makes the wheel. Um, but yeah, that's an electroplated wheel. Now the next wheel I'd like to show you is a sintered metal bond diamond grinding wheel. This is the type of wheel that perhaps a professional would buy. And it's the sort of wheel that is uh, very well made and the the actual diamond coating itself is what we is made up of uh, uh, like a, a matrix of um, diamond and metal particles. Uh, I touched this up, touched upon a sintered metal bond surface recently in one of our other videos. But um, if you can imagine a cake mix, um, you've got eggs, flour and water. They have to be mixed together to get the result. In this particular case, we've got metal particles that are mixed with diamond and uh, are made into a ring and fused onto the outside of this particular wheel. This type of wheel uh, has a depth of, a minimum depth of five millimeters of diamond. And I've been involved in selling these wheels now for uh, over 20 years and I've never had anybody tell me yet that they've worn one out. So they are quite durable uh, and they just keep going. As you, as you wear them, as you use it, more and more diamond particles are exposed. Um, if the wheel becomes a little bit blunt, you can use one of these. And this is an aluminium oxide dressing stick. Um, and what this does is when you are grinding across the face of the wheel, it exposes, takes away some of the metal and exposes fresh diamond. It's not going to shorten the life of the wheel. It's going to be, in fact, a benefit because you don't need to press as hard in the future. You'll hear the difference between a, a, a dull wheel and a sharp wheel. Um, They're very heavy. So if your, if your machine doesn't have good bearings in it, this may be a challenge for your machine. But um, in some cases, people, will, if they've got a double-sided grinder, they'll put a fine wheel on one side and a coarse wheel on the other. So, um, but wonderful wheels uh, produce a nice cutting action. Um, and as I said, they do last a very long time, uh, but very heavy. This sort of wheel, I would say, is, is probably about three kilos. This is six inch and in eight inch, uh, you can go up to probably about four kilos. So um, very nice wheels, sintered metal bond wheels. Um, and this is, this is a luxurious wheel if you're serious about cutting and intend doing it for a very long time. You'll get, you'll get great life out of this and get great results. The next item I want to show you is an electroplated diamond disc. Now, although not many people associate these things with cutting opal, they're normally associated with faceting. Um, but to be quite honest, um, a lot of people now are using these things, these items. Um, you can do doublets, you can do triplets, you can even cut solids on them. Um, and if you're struggling with your um, cutting technique to begin with, cutting on a flat surface is sometimes a lot easier to start with. So if you're starting out, 
A flat surface is quite good. This is an electroplated diamond disc, just like the electroplated wheel that I showed you before. The diamond particles are only on the surface. Um, once those particles wear, um, it no longer uh, will cut as well as it could, um, and you will finally discard it. But these are priced accordingly. So um, they do have their place, and uh, this is an electroplated diamond lap. The next item I want to show is a resin bond diamond lap. Um, in the same uh, manner that I showed you before, uh, which was an electroplated diamond disc, this is a resin bond diamond lap. It's, um, it's an alternative to a metal bond. Um, it's made in a similar manner. I made mention of the mixture of materials. Um, in this particular case, it's resin, it's not metal. And so it's a, a very hard, and I mean a very hard resin, that they actually use in this. They use powdered, powdered uh, material and mix it with diamond, and you end up with this type of surface. Very good for faceting, um, very good for making doublets and triplets. Um, the beauty of these types of wheels is that they produce a finer scratch pattern. You don't have those deep scratches that often can, appear, can occur from plated products. Plated products, to begin with, are very aggressive and they will often leave uh, scratches in your, in your material because the diamond particles are not uniform. They often sit high and they will actually produce deeper scratches. These uh, actually produce a finer scratch pattern and are very, very popular uh, for reducing those scratches. Uh, this one, this wheel, uh, has a 4mm depth of diamond on it. So once again, it it's has quite a bit of material on it. The, um, the only downside to a resin bond lap is the fact that it is softer than a sintered metal bond wheel and a electroplated wheel. It's a bit of a trade-off. Uh, you will get a nice result, a nice finish with this. But because it is in fact resin, you, it will tend to wear a little bit quicker than your metal bond, your sintered metal bond, and your electroplated lap or wheel. So keep that in mind uh, if you're thinking of leaning towards one of these, but they are priced accordingly as well. The next item I'd like to show to you is a, um, a sintered metal bond diamond lap. Uh, now. For many, many years, if you were involved in the triplet industry, this was the type of lap that you bought, um, mainly because the surface was just beautiful. The way, it was, the way it cut was really, really nice. The bond in this particular uh, lap is a, um, has a high silver content, uh, which makes the bond softer and is actually a lot easier to get a better finish on on flat surfaces. When you're trying to get uh, trying to produce um, a flat surface over a larger area, uh, harder bonds, and, and quite often uh, there, are, there are bronze finishes in these, or a, um, a copper, it looks like a copper or a bronze finish. They are traditionally harder than these, and to get that, fine, that, to get that nice finish is a lot harder. So these wheels, uh, this particular one is an Australian made wheel. It's no longer made. Uh, it was made by a company called Trefus. And if you're fortunate enough to have one of these uh, in your workshop, maybe it belonged to a family member or it's just something that you've acquired somewhere, these are a very good lap. I suggest you look after it uh, because um, th they are very good. Um, as I said, very good for doing triplets and doublets on. I actually use one of these for doing my solids on. I must admit it's not in the sort of condition that this one is. Um, I find it very good for just shaping up my stones uh, in preparation for making the solid. Um, very good wheels, um, not as heavy as, as other wheels, but uh, that's not important. Um, and they do last for quite some time if well looked after. So this is a sintered metal bond lap, diamond lap. The next items I'd like to share with you are some profile wheels. 
Um, these, once again, the, the edge is in fact a sintered metal bond finish. And as I've mentioned before, this is like the cake mix. This is a mixture of metal particles and, and diamond particles made together and fused together. But then what's happened is that during the manufacturing process, they've actually put a, a radius on the wheel, uh, a dome on the wheel. And in some cases, they call these bull nose wheels. Um, this, uh, these three um, are, are different diameters. We've got 75 mil, 75 mil, and this one here is 50 mil. But uh, the beauty of these types of wheels is that if you're doing a lot of boulder work, or even if you're just carving, um, they actually allow you to get into er areas to make shapes that so your traditional flat faced wheel is not able to. Uh, this radius allows you to get into concave pieces of boulder that you think are worth salvaging. Uh, you can get the that bull nose effect into the actual curvature of the opening of the boulder. And so you don't have those deep scratches that often come from uh, a traditional grinding wheel. So these wheels are metal bond um, and uh, they come in different thicknesses. This one is 4 mil wide, this one is 10 mil wide, and this one is 3 mil wide. Um, but once again, sintered metal bond wheels. Um, they're designed to quite, be quite durable. Um, you just have to make sure that if you're thinking about something like this, that the shaft that it's running on uh, is the right fit for these because these come in different size diameters and the bore, the mounting is always so very, very important. And almost in conclusion, what I wanted to share what you share with you is the fact that when you're putting your wheels on your grinder, make sure that the backing plate flange for the wheel to sit up against is clean. Making sure that the surface that, that's on your wheel that comes into contact with that is clean. This is always a good uh, measure to take uh, because if these surfaces are not clean, when you do them up, the wheel starts to do this little sideways movement. And it can be frustrating because uh, that's not what we're looking for. We want a true running wheel. So keep that in mind um, when you're mounting up your wheels. So um, I hope that what I've shared with you today has been of help. If you like it, uh, give us a like up, give us a thumb and subscribe because we will be providing more information about how to use your products and your wheels. Also, um, if you'd like to, leave a comment at the end as well. Thank you.